welcome back guys. It's day four on my Becoming Athletic Aesthetic program and um, shells and arms. What a great day this is. I absolutely love this one. It's probably the most aesthetic of all the days, just looking all about getting that pump. So it starts with three sets of eight to 10 and overhead press or also known as military press. So a couple of coaching cues here make sure each rep looks the same as the next one. As you hear, I'm, each rep is coming down, stopping dead on the chest and making sure I'm squeezing my glutes, keeping my abs tight and bracing and pressing through, resetting after each rep. Now, here you can also see everyone's hand position is slightly different with overhead press. It does, depends on how, you're, how your structure is, how you're built. But for me, I find my hands just outside my shoulders and elbows staying nice and tight will give me the straightest bar path possible. So what that means there is my forearms are perpendicular to the floor, which means they're going to have the straightest line from point A to point B, which then means I will be stronger in that position. A um, couple of other cues is also with the press, make sure each rep you're finishing off by pushing your head through. You want your arms in lines with the ears. The more that, that, that top position, then means that you're going to be able to hold that and bring it down under control. Most people keep it slightly in front of their face, means they're always keeping all the tension on their front delt. So what we want to do is make sure as you're pressing, your head comes through and you're then, that bar is exactly right over the midline of your body. It's the strongest position you can be in. The program then calls for three sets of eight to 10 on barbell curls. Um, key thing here I like to tell my clients is think about keeping your shoulders retracted. Now you can see the fact that I'm standing, there is, I, I try and keep myself as tight as possible, but there is some body English. So the, what that does mean, there will be some movement, especially when you are pushing yourself towards that higher end of the weight that you really can use for those reps, there may be some movement. But as long as you've got control of the weight the whole time throughout the movement, then that's okay. Um, other cues, keep your, try not to pigeon neck. So keep your head nice and tight. And every time you come up, what I see quite often is that people's heads come forward. So you want to think about keeping your head back, your shoulders retracted, flexing from the elbow and contracting your bicep at the top of that movement as hard as you can. Now, if you do see, start to use a little bit more momentum than you should, you want to always make sure you give back. Something I say to all my clients is if I help you with a rep, then you, it's pointless me just giving you the rep. So what you need to do is you need to think about controlling that weight down. So using that negative. So what that will be is on the way down, it'll be ripping all the muscle fibers and helping you get stronger. So as you can see here, this is my third set and I start to fatigue. So what I do, I start to use cheat curls here. So I use a little bit of momentum. So I lean forward. I never lean into my lower back, but I keep the tension all in the front of my body. So as I swing it up, I then try and control that way down. We then move into weighted dips. So these first three exercises, as you may be able to tell, are quite compound style exercises for the shoulders, the biceps, and the triceps. A compound exercise is just a multi-joint movement. So we start off with, what I tend to do in my workouts, I start out with compound exercises and then move on into isolation. Some other examples of a compound movement would be a back squat or a deadlift. So some of the coaching cues here with dips is try and lean forward into it. The idea here is, is you're gonna want your forearm, again, just like with the overhead press, you want your forearm pretty vertical. So it means you're gonna have the straightest line to push back up through. Again, that makes you stronger. So here you can see I'm leaning into the movement. I'm keeping the tension all into my shoulder, uh, into my triceps and into my chest. And the tension is not too much in the shoulders. It means that it's a more natural range of motion. Very much like a gymnast when they dip. As you can see here, this is a real good example. I'm staying leaning forward, the tension's staying where it should do. I'm locking out of the top and I'm trying to keep as little momentum as possible throughout the movement. So now into the fun stuff, the fluff work. Now, here the program calls for three sets of 10 to 12 on a drop set of dumbbell lateral raises. So we started the week with seated ones and today we've gone into standing ones. This will enable you to move a little bit more weight, but the idea is to still have as much control as possible throughout the movement. So here, as you can see, my, the dumbbells never go above my elbows or my shoulders. That means all the tension is gonna stay in the lateral head of the shoulder. Now, once you've then gone here, once you've done your 10 to 12 uh, on the first set, then you go into a drop. So I dropped by four kilos. Now, again, if you can't hit all 12, then that's, you know, it's a drop set. You're going towards that point of failure. 
But here, you can see, as I do start to fatigue, I then take that little mini break, a big brace, and I go again. I keep trying to get that movement, and still trying to hit those 12, making sure, again, each time, even, even as I'm fatiguing, I'm keeping the pull through the lateral head and not into the traps. So a tip that I try to, I'd say to people is have a slight kink in your arm and imagine that your arm is now in a cast. And then from there, you're gonna imagine you've got two strings on each of your elbows and like a puppet, your arms are being pulled up. And this will just keep all the tension all in your lateral head and your shoulder. And then on the drop set especially, here as you start to really fatigue, if the range of motion shortens, then that's fine because you're still keeping the tension inside in your lateral head, not into your traps. You're just going as much as you can. It's a drop set, so have some fun with it. So we then move into our second superset, which is alternating dumbbell curls and incline overhead dumbbell extension. Both, both 10 to 12 reps for three sets. Um, coaching tips with uh, dumbbell curls. Keep shoulders attracted, just like always, and keep the movement as controlled as possible. So you can see here, I have a slight bit of a rock to each side. That just gives me a nice little bit of uh, ability to get that little extra squeeze at the top of the movement, I find. So with dumbbell, with standing alternating curls, I do like to have a little bit of momentum because it does enable me to move that little bit more weight, but I still try to make sure I have as much control as possible about that movement so I'm not just flinging the weights up and down. We then move into incline um, overhead dumbbell extension. So what I do, I set the bench at 30 degrees. I put my foot on um, foot on the bench. So I'm actually like, kind of sitting halfway up the bench. And what that does, that enables me to get high enough so that every time that dumbbell goes behind my head, it doesn't keep hitting either one, my head or the bench. Now, the thing you can really see here is at the bottom of each rep, I'm getting that full stretch. Most people stop halfway. Stopping halfway will keep all the tension in the elbow. So we want to take it through its biggest range of motion and make sure you're getting the best contraction. Most people neglect overhead tricep work and this is the stuff that's going to give you big arms. You need to target that long head of the tricep. So when you're doing a double bicep, think about then the muscle that's hanging down underneath, that's the long head of the tricep. That's what you want to be stimulating and that's what gives you the look of big arms. We then move into the last superset of the workout, which is face pulls and cable pushdowns, which is three sets of 12 to 15 with a 60 second rest in between. Um, real good exercise for not only shoulder health, but hitting those rear delts. Big tip that I say for this is do not shrug while doing this movement. So you can see all this tension is going into my rear delts. I'm keeping my traps down. So how do you do that? Retract your shoulders, just like everything pretty much. Just like I do there, retract your shoulders and then big pull and contract. I've never actually done it this way using two ropes. Um, Anthony, who I was working out with, actually showed me this and it was real good. I did find I was able to move more weight, but I did get real good contraction in those rear delts. And a tip that I give to my clients that can't really fit it too well in their rear delts is keep focus on pulling your elbows apart and not pulling through your wrists. Most people pull through their wrists, which then go into their biceps. So we then moved on to rope pushdowns, which I don't actually do too often. Normally I use a straight bar because you can move more weight. But tip here, keep your shoulders retracted and keep the chest up. Keep that head still and try not to pigeon neck, just like with most movements that we do. And then with the rope, we want to be fo we want to focus on pushing down to the floor. A lot of the time you see people splaying it out at the bottom, but for me, uh, I just I, I feel where all the tension goes into the wrist and goes out of the tricep. So here, it's exactly the same movement, but we then use the two ropes again, and they showed us here. So I'm kind of imagining like a bit like a tricep kick back here. So my elbows are tight, my shoulders are retracted, I'm driving just to either side of my thighs, I'm making sure I'm keeping all that tension in the triceps. Really like this variation, um, definitely be doing it again soon. Um, here I was right towards the end, but I reset my shoulders, because I couldn't finish them off properly, I reset and finished off the last few reps and made sure I got the most out of the exercise. So to finish off this workout, um, it pro the program calls for some more curls, some cable curls, and it was three sets of 12 to 15. Now, we done one set of uh, 15, and I thought, you know what, let's do occlusion, because I haven't done that in a while. So occlusion is blood flow restriction training. 
Um, you can see I've got I've got tourniquet on my arm, it's on both arms, and what that's doing is stopping the blood escape from the muscle. So I'm pumping it all in. I'm doing a set of 30 reps, a set, and then three sets of 15 with a 30 second rest in between. This is a bit of an advanced style of training, so I don't recommend this to everyone. But from after playing around with myself, um, I really enjoy it. You get a real good pump from this. So here, just 30 reps keeping the shoulders back. And I'm only using about 30, 40% of what I normally use. I think I was using 10 kilos on the cable. So here's me resting for 30 seconds and uh, I go straight back into it again, shoulders set back. And with this, I'm with the blood flow restriction training, the idea is to keep the movement steady, controlled. It's not to fling the weight around. You're trying to get that muscle pumped full of blood. I do believe that this uh, blood flow restriction training was originally intended for people with rehab. When um, So they're still, uh, the amount of stimulation that you get from the muscle is supposed to be the same as if you were to use um, a heavy load. So I'm gonna put um, a link to um, a article that has all about this if you are interested. It's really good, definitely worth a read. And once you've had a read, judge for yourself if you actually wanna take part, um, not take part, but give it a go. So that's essentially the end, well, that's the end of the workout and that's the end of week one. Um, managed to get all three cardio sessions in this week as well, which is good. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying this. Uh, obviously all next week, I'll be filming these workouts again because they're a different style of workout. I will also be um, trying a different style of uh, commentary as well. I've got to work out exactly how I'm going to do it, but I'll be giving it a go next week just to try and change things up with these videos. So, as always, if you guys have got any questions, please let me know in the comment box below or on any of my social medias, at RobStarsPT. Uh, please give this video a like if you do. It does help my channel grow. And, um, yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying this and taking part, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Oh, my God.